Hi, welcome to this session of Village Connect. I'm Tom R., pastor of Village Church. The passages that we want to read for this lesson are begin at Mark 2, chapter 2, verse 1. Read all the way through chapter 3, verse 6. Mark 2, verse 1 through 3, verse 6. Read that together. See what strikes you about it. And, and then when you've, when you've finished, come back to the video and we'll begin the conversation. that was a lot to take in in one reading and I, I wanted you to read that whole section because the way it's written it's clear that this is these stories are to be read together as a unit. I'll, I'll tell you more about that in just a bit but first the first passage that we read it's one of the many miracle stories in Mark's gospel. There's a man who's paralyzed. Don't know the specifics of that but we know he had friends and his friends carried him to Jesus. I, I would imagine his friends carried him everywhere. They carried him to the market, maybe to synagogue. They, he was dependent upon them. They brought, they brought him to Jesus and it says the crowd was so abundant there that they were not able to get to Jesus. So they, they crawled up on the roof and they dug a hole and they lowered this fellow down into Jesus' presence. And Jesus looks at him and and says his sins are forgiven. Now, I don't know what the guys on the roof were thinking. I, uh, I'm sure they were grateful for that, but they probably wanted to say, yeah, but have you looked at his legs? We need some help with that as well. Well, then Jesus notices that there are religious leaders in the group and they're offended. They're offended because Jesus has done something that is God's to do, to forgive these sins, to, to forgive the sins of this, of this paralyzed man. So it's at that point that Jesus says, I'll do something else God would do. Rise, take up your pallet, and walk. And he does. He does just that. And I, I can't explain all of that, but what I, what I do know is that all of us at times are paralyzed a bit. We're paralyzed by things we can't shake. We're paralyzed by wrongs that we have done. We're paralyzed in certain relationships. We, we need friends who can help walk with us sometimes. And we need Jesus to forgive us, to, to show us that tomorrow can be different, that, that we can grow, that we can discover in our own lives that which is seems to be taken from us. There's a hopeful word for all of us. So now I want us to look at this whole section of Mark's Gospel. I, I told you at the beginning that this is a unit that goes together, is to be read together. I, I, I want to show you what I mean by that. This section begins with religious leaders developing hostility toward Jesus. They were silent, but they were hostile. Why does he do this? By the end of this unit, chapter 3, verse 6, they have already decided they're going to destroy him. And what happens all along is their hostility to his ministry increases. We see it in the structure of this unit. The story begins, this unit begins with a miracle story. Jesus heals the paralytic. And then we get a story where Jesus eats with Levi the tax collector, goes to his house and eats with Levi the tax collector. And then there's a story where the religious leaders come and complain about Jesus' disciples. Why, why don't they fast? John the Baptist's disciples, they fast. Why don't your disciples fast? And then the next story, they complain again, this time not because the disciples are fasting, but because they're eating. They went through the fields and they harvested some grain on the Sabbath. Why do your disciples eat like this on the Sabbath? And then the unit ends with another miracle story. 
if you pay attention to it, there's, it begins with a miracle story, and then there's a story about eating, and then there's a story about fasting, and then a story about eating, and then a miracle story. It's an A, B, C, B, A unit. It's a common literary practice to communicate a point. Read this all together. But here's the thing. There are a couple of places that don't fit the structure. Some would say it's sloppy writing, that they don't fit the structure, but I think that it's actually intended there to reflect on each other. There are two places that don't fit. One is the call of the tax collector. Jesus calls a tax collector to come be part of his community. They wouldn't have done that in those days. Tax collectors were viewed as unscrupulous people. They, they weren't welcomed among the righteous. But with Jesus, he says, Levi, I want you to come be part of my community. There's another place that doesn't fit the structure. Jesus does, offers this teaching saying, no one sews a new patch on an old cloth. No one puts new wine into old skins that burst them open. The, the old structures, if you will, can't hold them. If I understand the text, the calling of Matthew and the new wine skins are illustrative of one another. What, what Jesus is saying is he's creating a community that doesn't fit the old assumptions. It doesn't fit the old structures. He's creating a community that brings a new way of seeing how we can be with one another. That was his ministry, was to create a community that was shaped by his love, that, that the Christian community might live in that newness of life. What we know is that when we are able to do that, not always are we able to, but when we are able to live in that kind of gracious, inclusive, welcoming community, there'll be hostility. There'll be some who say, that's not the way we're supposed to be. It's been that way from the very beginning. This is a, a unit that reveals that which is beautiful about Jesus' ministry, but also how at times we find it very difficult. We can be hostile to His word. I want you to reflect on that sum in your conversation together. Thank you.